thank you for inviting me uh, over here to JNU. Uh, since yesterday, I've been going to places where protests are going on. Yesterday afternoon, I was at uh, Delhi University, and then uh, in the evening, I went past uh, Jamia Amelia and then Shaheen Bagh. And uh, there was a vibrancy in the in every event, and it was uh, very nice that uh, finally I could also come to JNU because I have been to JNU in its, as somebody said when I mentioned this, the golden period of JNU because uh, I had the privilege of staying on this campus when uh, Professor Alag was the VC, uh, since he was uh, uh, he's a relative, so. I, it, it hurt me when I heard about uh, the uh, atrocities being committed and the attacks and things. And then what was most shocking was that when I, when it was known that I was coming here this evening, uh, somebody sent me a message saying, be careful about the mask attackers. Uh, and uh, you know, that kind of reaction to be raised when people find out that you're going to GNU is is very troubling because uh, this is not the spirit of our democracy and this is what they are trying to turn it into a mobocracy in the past few years and that is why we must stand up and fight against these forces because this is not a fight against a mere law this is a fight against an attempt to change the character of this nation as we uh, have loved and cherished for all these years and that is what is the danger because uh, in the f it, it is for the first time in independent India that a law has been forced on India which discriminates on the basis of religion. We have never had, we have had laws which people have not accepted and uh, have uh, protested against but this law CAA has gone completely against uh, the spirit of our constitution and the idea of India that our founders had uh, for this nation when they founded it. And so it must be uh, opposed. And also it has to be opposed by because of who is doing, who is behind this law, what is the ideology that is trying to force this on India. And that is the more dangerous thing because they are stated ideology is for a Hindu Russia and uh, uh, this is their way of establishing the Hindu Rashtra without ever making a proclamation of doing that and uh, this is their style of working and that is where we have to be alert to every strategy uh, they use in doing that. This is the city in which in 1948 three bullets were fired at uh, in, into the chest of uh, Gandhi and I believe those were the first uh, uh, gunshots in the establishment of the Hindu Rashtra and these three laws CAA, NRC and uh, the process of NPR are the new three shots that are being fired at our democracy in attempting to establish a Hindu Rashtra and so that needs to be opposed and that design that has been going on for so long, one step at a time, a little chip at a time, a little uh, cut at a time, which must be opposed and we must fight against. Because these are forces that are like termites. The surface remains beautiful, but they hollow us out internally even without our knowledge. And that is why we must be alert and fight them. Yesterday, I had gone to Gandhi Smriti and to my horror, I noticed that in the Birla House display galleries, they had removed all the displays of the beautiful photographs of uh, Henry Cartier-Bresson, the French uh, photographer who had photographed the aftermath of Bapu's murder. And there was a whole gallery of pictures that were displayed, which Henry Cartier-Bresson had presented to Gandhi Smriti and they had been in exhibit for the past 50 years. And suddenly yesterday when I went there, all those pictures had disappeared and black TV screens had uh, replaced them. And when I asked them why those uh, had been replaced and who had uh, asked for those to be replaced, I was told that Upar se order aaya tha. 
but it happened after the Prime Minister's visit to Gandhi Smriti in November. And those were the photographs that told the story of the murder of Bapu in a very evocative manner because they were photographs in a series right after his murder up to his funeral. And they were beautifully uh, captured, beautifully printed in sepia tones with historic texts describing each and every photograph. So visitors used to see the images, read the history and come to know the, about the history of the events that happened at Birla House. But this history is very uncomfortable to the government of the present day. And it's not a surprise that after the PM's visit, orders were made to remove those photographs. And that is again a step towards obscuring the facts behind the murder of Gandhi. And not only the murder of Gandhi, because those of you who are aware of the Kapoor Commission's reports will also know that Gandhi's murder was, a signal, was supposed to be a signal for an attempted overthrow of the government and then an establishment of the Hindu Rashtra. It, is, it was revealed in the Kapoor Commission's report. And so this removal of these pictures becomes that much more significant by who has done it. And it is the same with these three laws, CAA, NRC and NPR. It is not the evil as it appears, but the evil in who is doing it and what their intentions are. And they have never wavered. They have never wavered from their belief and their ideology of establishing a Hindu Rashtra. And a Hindu Rashtra that is based on caste supremacy. And so we must be very alert against these. And these small steps, if they are not stepped or stopped in time, we will have lost the war because they are so well prepared to achieve what they have decided to achieve. And that is where we cannot give them any leeway. And that is the reason why we need more and more institutions to fight. It gives me great hope for the future to see the spirit of the students. Yesterday when the DU protests were happening, it was raining. The police ran to find shelter. But not a single student left the meeting in search of shelter from the rains. And that is the spirit that gives, a, gives me hope that these minds and hearts have been ignited and they are dedicated to protect the spirit of the Indian nation. Today as we stand, we stood in, uh, as a tribute to Rohit Vemula, it is to every underprivileged student who aspires to empower themselves with education and knowledge that we must dedicate this day so that no more Rohits are forced on students because of the change of laws or rules or uh, what is supposedly a rationalization of fees and things. Because these are all insidious steps to create the caste hierarchies and enshrine them and deprived deprived the deprived already deprived lot of our population and so we have to this is a time when we have to stand in solidarity with everyone and all of us have to reunite fortunately these three laws like the Khilafat movement in the freedom uh, struggle have given us a reason to reunite and it seems as if those who are feeling persecuted are uniting and we will only be strong if we stand united and fight this battle in a united manner. One of the reasons that I am very scared of the NPR is that this country has a very insidious reputation. The city of Delhi knows that in 1984, ration cards, electoral rolls and other government data was used to find families of six Sikhs and kill them. In 1992-93, in my city of Mumbai, Muslims living in minorities in majority areas were identified in a similar manner in uh, using government data and they were killed or, or, or driven out. In 2002, in Ahmedabad, the same tactic was used to find and attack Muslim ghettos and settlements. 
And so I believe that the more data, personal data that the government has, the more insecure the citizens of this nation will become. And that is where the exercise of NPR, which looks to be like a census exercise, must be opposed. Because we don't know who the, that data is going to be shared with in times of crisis when they want to intimidate people. And in today's time when uh, smartphones and things are so easily trackable, the more information they have, the easier it will be to track individuals and target them. And so these uh, supposedly very innocent exercises need to be opposed and need to be stopped in their track. And that will only happen if we stand up and fight and tell this government that we still are a democracy. We are not going to allow them to hijack it. We are not going to allow the dictatorial elements to use democratic process and grab power and then make us a subject of an authoritarian regime. People power still matters in this country. We, the example of our freedom fighters, both revolutionary and satyagrahi, is not that distant in our past that we will forget it. A lot of people from that generation who fought for our independence are still in our midst and still inspire us to fight for independence if it becomes necessary today. And today, believe me, you, we are fighting for our independence. We are fighting to be free. Students are fighting to be free. Teachers are fighting to be free. Everyone in this nation who thinks they are free citizens has been enslaved. Teachers don't have the liberty to decide what they will teach. Students have, don't have the liberty to decide what and how they will learn. The police don't have liberty. They are slay, enslaved by the politicians. So every sphere of our citizenship is in some way or the other enslaved. And we all need to get free because our founding fathers had, had a dream of complete freedom for every individual, every student, of uh, every citizen of this nation. And that dream still remains unachieved. And we must promise ourselves and the nation that we will fight for this. This opportunity is a godsend. This misadventure of the government is a godsend which is uniting us. And if we miss the boat this time, it might be that we'll sink to such a level that we might not be able to resurface again. And so it is very critical that we unite wherever, wherever we can oppose, wherever we can declare of our opposition to the methods employed by this government, we must try to do that. Nothing is going to ever be enough. All the small little meetings, processes, many a times I go to a meeting or a uh, thing and there are about 50 people or 60 people and the organizers feel uh, embarrassed by it. But I feel very emboldened by it. Because only politicians need numbers. When there is a sincere effort, civil society, when it decides to fight, it is not enslaved by the requirement of numbers. Just one person can become an inspiration from their own actions and the sacrifices that they make. And so a small gathering of sincere minds is never insignificant. And so let us all pledge today that it will not be just confined to the campuses, but we will take it into the localities and the lanes and the hamlets of this, will, uh, this country. Because believe you, me, you collectively, these three uh, proposed laws and processes are going to harm the welfare of every citizen and more of the welfare of the people in the villages. Because they are going to be, uh, be faced with extortionist demands because they will be dependent on the small time leadership in their villages who will use this opportunity to extort from them under the guise of providing the proof, the very unclear proof because we don't know what this government is going to accept as proof of our citizenship because I suspect that though they also don't know what they are finally going to accept 
as proof of our citizenship. And so when in this kind of a situation, the poor people of our villages and the Juggis, the communities who really are bewildered by what is going to happen to them, are going to be subjected to cruel exploitation. And we must fight for their rights also, for their welfare also. So the time has come to move out of our comfort zones and do whatever we can to fight against these draconian laws and this tendency of this government, the democratically, supposedly democratically elected government from its dictatorial attitudes and make them understand that we the people will not bend and we will fight back. And the intelligentsia will have to get down and dirty and fight also. This time is not there to intellectualize this fight. The, this fight is going to be a, a fight which demands that we fight it on the street level, in the heat and dust of this nation. We need to save the nation we have come to love. And we need to save the nation from turning into a monster that is a thing out of our worst nightmare. So we all will have to fight this battle. And campuses like JNU and uh, uh, Jamia Media and those places will have to give the leadership in the hands of the students and make them understand that they have to fight for their present and their future. Because old people like me, we, we finished, you know, what difference does it make what the next 10 years are going to be for us? But it's your life that counts. So take responsibility for that and be ready to fight. And if it gets dirty, learn to fight dirty also. Fight back in a manner that is befitting. I'm not saying that you become violent. I'm not saying that you throw stones. But if it comes time to push them down, don't hesitate. Jai Hind.